Welcome to It's All Geek to Me, a podcast where two friends experience popular nerdy franchises for the first time. My name is Leah, and this season, my co-host Kelly will be watching my favorite films, The Lord of the Rings, for the very first time, and I'm the expert. Let's dive in. So we are back for episode two of The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and we have left the Shire. I'm officially one hour into it now. Where we had left off previously was Gandalf had left the Shire. He told Frodo, keep it secret, keep it safe. And he just ditched him. He just left. Yeah, and I I have a few problems with that, which we'll get into. So right after Gandalf leaves, we see this like big evil looking fortress, very evil looking. It's very a parent that this is the bad guys we hear Gollum screaming baggins fire <laughs> and so you know some bad stuff is about to go down this is good foreshadowing so some presumably evil guys come out of the fortress on their horses and then gandalf for some reason knows what's going on and he gets scared and then he goes to the library because that's what we all do when we're scared well he's doing research yeah he reads about the son of the king i forget his name again isildur <laughs> Sealed door. Sealed door. There's so many names. Yeah. I even don't know a lot of the names of the locations I find really difficult. Well, I know the Shire. Great. <laughs> so Isildur, he is talking about how he's keeping the ring. He wants it as an heirloom. And he's talking about how the writing disappears and only fire will reveal the writing on the ring. So then cut to the evil horsemen. They come to the Shire. They're looking for Baggins. And this other hobbit's like, uh, he's not here. Uh, and he's scared. And then we see Sam and Frodo coming out of a bar, being adorable, being besties. Sam said hi to Rosie or said bye to Rosie at the door. Was that Rosie? I couldn't tell. That was Rosie. Yeah, so they were being adorable. And then Sam calling Frodo Mr. Frodo is just the cutest thing. Isn't it? I just want a story about them just being besties, which I hope that we get a little bit more of. Yeah. And then Frodo goes back home, which is Bilbo's house, and it's looking very ominous in there. It is no longer the warm and happy place that we saw before. And then Gandalf shows up. He is frantic. He's terrified right now. He's just freaking out. And he's like, is it secret? Is it safe? (laughs) They find the ring. And then Gandalf just throws it into the fire. Then he gives it to Frodo, which I was also a little weirded out by. Like, he was like, here, take it. It's quite cool. And I was like, why are you giving him this ring that looks like it's burning? So then Frodo looks at it. The words start appearing. And then Gandalf kind of explains that the ring is like evil or whatever. And then he says the ring has awoken. So up until this point, Gandalf knew that Frodo had a ring of power, but he didn't know if it was the ring of power. Oh, okay, because I wrote that down later when he was talking to the other wizard. Why did he say he didn't know what was going on with the ring when he clearly knew that Bilbo had the ring? He was unsure. So that's why he went to the library. That's why he was getting more information on the ring to figure out how can I figure out if this is the ring of power. He learned that if you throw it in the fire, the words will appear. So that's why he went back to the Shire to get proof as to whether or not this was the ring of power. And that's why he left it with Frodo. He wasn't as concerned previously. Cool. So then we find out that Sauron is alive and that was his evil castle and those are his like evil men and that they tortured Gollum and that they found out that information which honestly really rude but also how does Gandalf know all of this? It's explained a little bit more in the book. They release Gollum, Gandalf finds him and then Gandalf gets this information from him. So then Gandalf is basically just saying like you got to get out of here which I also had a problem with because I was like Gandalf you're just straight up ruining Frodo's life right now. Okay, this was cry moment number three for me. Oh my gosh, why are you always crying? It was when Frodo realizes the ring is evil, he can't give the ring to Gandalf and him realizing he needs to leave the Shire and then Gandalf being like, hobbits are amazing creatures, just through that whole section. Because Frodo really jumped into action when he realized he can't give the ring to Gandalf because it's too powerful in his hands. He needs to take it himself and I just love that he didn't have any moment of hesitation. You know, it just, it angers me a little bit. I've taken like writing classes and like I said, I was a film major so I know that there's like the reluctant hero, but I am just so mad at Gandalf. 
why would you ruin Frodo's life like that? And then Sam, who is eavesdropping, whose name, by the way, I find it is Samwise, but they call him Sam. Samwise Gamgee. I love him. But I just, I am I hate that Gandalf is like, I won't touch it. I'm not messing with it. I understand that he's too powerful or whatever, but he's really ruining Frodo's life right now. Like Frodo's just having a happy little hobbit life. And then Gandalf's like, hey, you have to go. Everyone wants to kill you now. Which I, I guess I do understand because you just explained it. But I'm so annoyed that he wouldn't just let Bilbo take the ring with him so that they would be chasing after Bilbo. I think with Bilbo, Bilbo had the ring for too long and he was too far gone and more easily succumbed to darkness than Frodo who's only had the ring for a short while. Although he's starting to feel it. He is definitely starting to feel it. But I think that at this point, it's just luck of the draw. Like Frodo just dealt a bad hand and there's really nothing that Gandalf can do. He is the only person at this point that he can trust to have the ring because he already has it. And they also want to keep this as secret as possible. Yeah, and he says like, don't tell anybody you're a Baggins. Mm -hmm. Then Sam is eavesdropping and he gets to be a part of the adventure, which I was really happy about because I hate the idea of Frodo being by himself. What an adorable world they live in. I love the look of it. And it was also, I know you're probably going to say you cried at this moment, which is going to annoy me. I know it because there's another moment coming up. (laughs) When Sam is like, this is the furthest I've ever (laughs) been. I knew it. I knew it. When I was watching this, I was like, ugh, Leah's crying right now. This is so dumb. Yeah, that's number four. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, I thought that was a really cute moment. I did write down that it was cute, but it was not worth my tears. And I also wrote down, I relate to the hobbits not wanting to leave home. And also later... There's more about the hobbits that I'm like, I wish I was a hobbit because everything about them is me. They don't like to leave home. You're definitely a hobbit. Yeah. They like to eat like eight meals a day, which that's me. I love that. (laughs) So then Gandalf goes to this other guy who looks like Gandalf, whose name is Saruman. (laughs) I wrote down immediately that this guy's name is way too similar to Sauron and he's definitely going to be evil. So I called that and I was (laughs) right, which I was really pleased with myself for. I wrote down Sauron seems very sketchy and he wants to use the seeing stone and Gandalf's like uh we definitely shouldn't do that it's a bad idea and then I find out that the great eye is the eye of Sauron yes I was so excited for that moment for you to realize so he's definitely not god so the eye is a bad guy Mm -hmm. so the eye is I guess just this eyeball now that used to be forkhead so now he's just the eye and his spirit has stayed alive because the power of the ring still exists in the world because of the horcrux got it (laughs) so So then Saruman is like, they're going to kill Frodo, by the way. And then Gandalf's like, oh my gosh. And then he starts freaking out. He tries to leave. Saruman locks him into the room. And then they have this very weird battle. The battle is very strange. These two old men with their sticks. (laughs) These two old men just like being thrown across the room. I was cringing a tiny bit. I'm not gonna lie. This is the first moment that I was like, this is a tiny bit cringe. I will say for these movies being 20 years old, they do look really good for being that old. But there are moments. There are (laughs) moments. When Gandalf's spinning around in this weird slow circle. I was like, what is happening here? I just wrote LOL. Yeah, that was definitely cringe. So yeah, spins him around. And then I wrote in my notes, I find out later that he's not dead, but I assumed that he was killed in that moment. The rest of my notes, I'm operating on the belief that Gandalf is dead, just so you know. Do you want a little backstory on who Saruman is to Gandalf or did you kind of pick that up? He's a wizard. They're besties. I don't know. He's the head of the order. So he is, as the white wizard, is the most powerful wizard in their order. Saruman is a new bad guy. He's never been bad before. Yeah, he just wants to join Sauron because he's like this. This just seems like the best option for us right now, which is exactly. a weird thing yes. to do. It's a it's a weird I jump to make. I did want to say one thing about a comment that Saruman made that made me laugh because he was talking about the hobbits and he said, oh, yeah, he was like, you like that hobbit weed too much. <laughs> Your love of the halflings weed has made you weak or something. <laughs> he's just a big old pothead. Which I was like, is that what he's smoking every time he's in his pipe? Because when he was going to tell Frodo the situation, there was smoke all over. And I was like, this guy is high AF right now. Like He's just lit. <laughs> Possibly. So we cut back to the hobbits and they're going through the crops <laughs> and Sam is being adorable. I cannot get over how cute Sam is. I'm starting to like Sam better than Frodo. I love that you love Sam because he's low-key my favorite character. Adorable. And when he like starts to get nervous for a second that Frodo disappeared out of his sight, I was like, Sam, stop being so cute. I love you. <laughs> and then the two troublesome guys show up. They're stealing crops, which is rude, but I'm happy to see that they're like joining the Hobbit crew. So now it's like a little pack that they're 
they're going on this adventure together. So that's Mary and Pippin. They're besties as well. Mary, I would say, is the more logical of the two. And then Pippin is the fool. Just because I'm, you know, making a whole thing out of the hobbits being cute. I did make a note that I think Mary is cuter. Mary is <laughs> cuter. But I, I don't know. I like Pippin a little bit better. So they're stealing. They're running away from the guy whose farm it is, I guess. And a very adorable, hilarious moment ensues. I would love to just see Hobbit hijinks the whole movie through but I have a feeling that that's not gonna happen because there's also like <laughs> some battles they fall down a hill and then they get really weirdly hyped about these mushrooms and like even Sam is like inspecting the mushrooms and smelling them like they love mushrooms it's a hobbit characteristic to just be totally infatuated with food yeah and, and that's what I'm saying I love I wish I was a hobbit I feel like I already kind of am a hobbit I've got curly hair I have never related more to a fantasy creature in my life just being extra hyped about food <laughs> then Frodo starts getting really paranoid and he's like, we got to go. We got to get off the road because Gandalf did say like, stay off the road. And I guess they were on the road at that point. So then they go hide under a tree and this evil horseman comes up. The horse is nasty looking. He's got like blood and nails coming out of him and stuff. So you can tell this is an evil horse. Oh, so many bugs. Ew. I was really grossed out by all these bugs showing up. And then Frodo starts having this weird moment. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it in a PG way, but he is... There's no nicer way to say it. It looks like he's having an O moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Starts getting a little excited with himself. Starts putting the ring on and then Sam stops him. And then he like throws something to distract the evil horseman. And then Mary's like, all right, I know where to go. Let's get on out of here. So then they start running. Somehow they get away from this horseman, even though they're all like surrounding this horseman. And then all of a sudden they're like getting away, which I, I wasn't a hundred percent clear on how they managed to avoid him in the books they get lost in the woods for like years years literal years they're like lost in the woods they meet this guy named tom bombadil which is the biggest controversy that tom is not in the movies he's so hard to explain it's like not even worth doing it so this was a compressed timeline of that something that took years wait i'm so confused so all this stuff is happening potentially in the books at least over the course of years yeah <laughs> but in the in the movies they shortened it to a few moments and they get on a boat and Frodo like jumps off the dock and like gets onto the boat and he makes it. Oh, and I also wrote down because he's like, oh, it's about 20 miles from here. And I was like, why are these hobbits using miles as measurement? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I know they're not from America. Well, they're not in England either. <laughs> they're in Middle Earth. In Middle Earth, they use miles. Interesting little tidbit there. So I have to assume that J.R.R. Tolkien is American. He's actually from South Africa, as I've just looked up. And then he lived in England. So. I don't know. So why is he using miles as a measurement? <laughs> okay, so yeah, so it's pouring out. I guess they're off the boat now. They go to this gated community. I, I wrote, they're all super freaked out. They're so small. I didn't realize how small hobbits are until this scene. Yeah. They are very, very small creatures. Like they don't even see over the bar. They get to this bar, by the way. And <laughs> Frodo pretends his last name is Underhill. Gandalf isn't there. And I wrote Gandalf is dead because at that point I was like, Gandalf is is straight up dead right now. And I also noticed one guy just had a ferret with him at the bar, which I was into. I was like, that's a good thing to bring to the bar with you. Also, did you love how the feeling really shifted when you were in the Shire and you're at the bars and the parties? It's so lively and happy and positive. And here it was really ominous. And people were, you know, yelling, get out of my way, hobbits. And, you know, they weren't welcome there. Scary. Yeah. There was also this ranger whose name was Strider. Mm -hmm. And he was watching them he was looking very ominous and evil in the corner and i immediately wrote down this is definitely julia has a crush on <laughs> uh, <laughs> the writer <laughs> i just i could tell from the hooded just sitting there that that's your type well you didn't think it was the guy at the gate you didn't think that was my crush <laughs> although i i will say strider ended up being a hottie so i get it so frodo keeps on getting like a little sweaty and like oh facey and he really wants to wear the ring and I also noticed terrible cuticles looking <laughs> very rough. I was hoping that you mentioned that but of course you were gonna notice his cuticles were disgusting but oh my god no. <laughs> 
just awful. And then yeah. the next part, I was cracking up how this <laughs> I happened. I can't say. even, like, just the suspension of disbelief for a moment. I was just laughing so hard at just this turn of events. One of the hobbits, I think it was Pippin, he yeah. <laughs> starts telling everyone, oh, I know a Baggins. That's Frodo Baggins. He's my second cousin. Removed once. or It's like whatever story he's telling. Yeah. And Frodo starts freaking out. Then he goes to grab him. He trips. The ring is flying in the air. And <laughs> lands on his <laughs> perfectly on his finger and then he disappears and everyone's like ah but then i guess they just forget about it like a second later they're all drunk then frodo is in this weird shadow world and sauron is like i see you and he's like being super creepy about it so then frodo pulls off the ring and he's all sweaty and just absolutely floored by this turn of events and I'm still laughing because this is incredible. So then Strider pulls him away. Turns out he's a super hottie. Those eyes. Ooh. Everybody in this movie has blue eyes so far. Every single person. That is true. I noticed that and I was like very confused because I guess in Middle Earth everyone's got blue eyes. <laughs> Meanwhile the horses are coming. Strider knows they're coming and he's like you can't wait for Gandalf anymore. These guys are coming for you. They're gonna kill you. How about the moment so Strider takes Frodo into the room and then Sam Sam, Pippin, and Mary burst in with a candlestick, a stool, and just his fist. I love They're them. They're just so yeah. brave. I just love that moment. They were being super adorable. And then Strider's like, guys, chill. I'm a good guy. <laughs> they like staged this weird sleeping thing. And the evil horsemen start stabbing the pillows. And it turns out that they're not there. I think one thing that I'm struggling with a little bit, but I'm, I'm willing to let it go, is these guys seem to know exactly where the hobbits are, and yet they didn't realize that those pillows were not hobbits. So when Frodo wears the ring and the powers are being activated, they are drawn to the power. So they kind of knew the general area that the hobbits were, and I'm sure that they knew that there were hobbit-sized rooms. But it turns out they are not in the hobbit-sized room. They are in Strider's room, which, by the way, adorable that all four of them just fit in the bed. We're in bed together. I know. Very cute. So Strider then explains the story that these evil horsemen are actually the men who had the nine rings. So they're the Nazgul and they always feel the presence of the ring and the ring wants to find its master. Then they decide they have to go to the elves, which I don't remember why. Because the elves will know what to do. Something you learn about Strider more in the books in the movie, so I feel like I can explain this, is Strider, he's not an elf, but he grew up with the elves. And so that's sort of like his family. So they're going there because the elves know about the ring. The elves know that Strider was looking for it. Gandalf was looking for it. And they're trying to convene and get information about the ring and what to do next. So then they're going on this adventure. The hobbits are really having a hard time coping with the fact that they don't stop for like eight meals a day, which again, 100% relate to that. That is so me. <laughs> second breakfast. I wish I was a hobbit. I'm ready for second breakfast right now, honestly. <laughs> I just had second breakfast. <laughs> Perfect. And then the evil wizard Saruman is talking to Sauron and Sauron's like, you got to build an army. So then the orcs start knocking down trees and Saruman's like, I want them all ripped down because he does not like trees for some reason. <laughs> he does <laughs> not. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Maybe they're building a ship. I also found out that Gandalf is alive. He's just at the top of a very tall tower and it's raining. So he's like not happy. Yes. Then we go back to the hobbits. They're exhausted. They get a bunch of weapons from Strider and like a bunch of idiots, they start making a fire <laughs> to eat <laughs> tomato and bacon, which I would risk my life for that too, to be honest. Worth it. <laughs> yeah. Frodo is pissed. He stomps out the fire, but of course the evil Nazgul notice and then they come for them. And then everyone's there holding their weapons, being super nervous, and the horsemen start coming. And then Sam, being adorable, yeah. is a little hero and he jumps out and he attacks first. And I was like, Sam, I love you more than I've ever loved anybody in the world <laughs> because that's a really good friend. That's a really good friend. He's so brave. That's just what I love about just the hobbits in general, but specifically Sam is very brave. He's so brave and he's so small and Frodo the exact opposite of Sam just falls <laughs> cannot handle it anymore, which is what I would do in a fight, if I'm being honest. <laughs> if I was being attacked by like an evil guy, I would just go into the fetal position because like what else is there to do? So I relate to Frodo in that. I can't be mad at him. So then he takes out the ring and he decides to put it on, which I, again, I don't really understand why, but maybe he's just like drawn to it or something and he thinks it's going to save him. And I think the ring is getting into his head and saying, this is the best thing for you to do right now. And then the kings, oh my gosh, super trippy kings 
looking very weird. And I guess that makes them see the ring even better because then they're like trying to go for it. But then they don't. Frodo pushes them away or something. So when he puts on the ring, he's still in the same place. He's just seeing the world kind of in a different place. So that's still the Nazgul. Yeah, but they're like, they look like kings now. They look different. <laughs> I thought they were, the nine men were kings. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they were kings. Sorry. They're not kings anymore. They're not kings anymore, but they were kings. Yes. Okay. Well, they were wearing little crowns. I don't know. So then Frodo gets stabbed, which I shouldn't be laughing about. The face he makes when he gets stabbed. It was a funny stabbing. So Strider comes, rescues everyone. He burns them all. Looking hot as anything. I did write hot guy burns them all down. Ooh, in the moment when four of them have now fled and there's one left and he's behind him and Strider just kind of sees him over his shoulder and then throws the thing into his face. God, that moment is just beautiful. That is a good moment. That is good. I feel like the people who are listening to this are like, these girls are thirsty. I, I'm thirsty for Strider. <laughs> He turns around and all the hobbits are like, um, Frodo's looking rough. He's having a hard time with this, which again, I can totally relate to Frodo in this moment. Even if I get the smallest cut, I will cry like there's no tomorrow. So I get that. But he's been stabbed by a Morgul blade, which then dissolves. They were like, this is beyond my healing powers. We have to go to the elves. He needs some elfish medicine. So then they set off to save Frodo, who's just in a lot of pain, I guess. Right. I, if he dies, I'm I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the end. Um, yeah, so the Morgul Blade, I'm not going to explain to you exactly what's happening to him and why it's not just a normal stab wound, because you will find that out pretty shortly. This is where we've stopped with them riding to Rivendell. And again, I have a lot of thoughts here. And I have to say, I think, you know, we haven't seen or heard anything about Bilbo, so I have to assume that he is no longer the bad guy. Yeah. But I still think there's an opportunity for him him to come back and maybe join forces. Obviously, Sauron is doing a really great job recruiting people because he recruited this very important wizard. So maybe he'll recruit Bilbo. I'm not going to lose hope just yet, but he does not seem to be the main antagonist because Sauron is still alive. Yeah, he's not the main antagonist. <laughs> okay, but he still seems evil. I, I want to explain to you exactly what his purpose is, but we'll save that for the next episode. So Strider is a cutie. We met Strider. That was an important moment and Gandalf is still alive but how is he gonna get down from that tower I'm not sure yeah does he have any magic powers without his magical staff maybe he has friends in high places <laughs> literally because he's in a very high tower <laughs> literally so what's your thoughts on Strider I mean he's very obviously a good guy so I think that became apparent very quickly as soon as he kind of told Frodo like stop showing everybody that you have this ring even though he wasn't but the whole sliding the ring onto the finger I can tell immediately that Strider is going to be a good guy. I knew immediately that Evil Wizard was a bad guy and I'm pleased with myself for that. I don't know why they're knocking down trees. I guess he's like really just not a fan of trees. He's building an army out of trees. He's building these fires because he's building a new race of species called the Orakai, which are a hybrid between orcs and goblins and they just need to make a lot of fire. I, I don't know. I was confused. I wrote down not caring about the environment. He does not care about the environment. Yeah. I think the lines are very clearly drawn. I don't think there's going to be any like crazy betrayals from Carrot, as far as I can tell. It seems like there's a very harsh line between what is good and what is evil. So I don't think there's going to be any huge surprises here. I think we just have an epic quest. We gotta, well, I don't know. I don't know what the quest is yet. Well, the ring can be very divisive though. The ring knows how to bring out the bad in people. So I hope Frodo doesn't become a bad guy because I would be really, really hurt if Sam and Frodo got separated. I mean, who knows? He might just die in this next chapter and then this whole podcast is done. And if he does, then that's the end of this podcast. Yeah, basically. <laughs> we are not doing this anymore. We'll move on to Star Wars. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens next. I'm excited to meet the elves. I want to see, this is like a silly reason to be excited, but I do want to see how similar they are to the Skyrim elves. Because I always play as an elf in Skyrim. All right, well, I guess I'll find out next Thursday what happens next. You will. You've been listening to the It's All Geek to Me podcast, hosted by Leah and Kelly. Make sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast player and give us a rating. You can also find us on Twitter at All Geek Podcast. New episodes drop every Thursday. See you next week. <laughs>